Well, I'm in Athens, Michigan today, and I'm standing with Clee Bauer of the Athens Area History Museum. Are you the curator here? No, I'm the <laughs> director. I, no, I'm one of the volunteers that have been organizing and sorting and cleaning. She's underselling herself. She is a miracle worker for this museum, and it is a wonderful place, so I'm going to take a tour and uh, you guys should definitely come down and check this out. It looks like a beautiful little museum to come see and get a, a taste of the history of Athens. So come along and join me. So my tour through the Athens Area History Museum was quite a fascinating one. This is a small museum. However, they have done a very good job of making use of the smaller space to provide some really fascinating exhibits to look at. And it's gonna be impossible for me to tell you all of them. And I certainly don't want to do that because I'd like you to put this on your list of museums to pay a visit to when you're in town and see the exhibits for yourself. So I'm gonna give you the highlights of exhibits that I found most memorable in my visit. The first thing that I notice when I walk into the front exhibit space after you enter the museum, among the many artifacts that are on display in this front room, is a newspaper article that is covering an entire wall. And it's quite imposing. It's an article from the Athens Times from May 27th, 1931. And it's an article of a hundred years looking back at the early pioneer history of Athens. And it has a lot of great articles there. They actually showed me a copy of the original newspaper that that big poster on the wall was created from. And what's most impressive, if you watched my video on Burr Oak Cemetery, three of the men that I profiled filed in that video from that cemetery are depicted in the same photo in the center on the front page of that newspaper. Samuel Culp and his son Jerome are in the same photograph with El Dorado Greenfield. So I'll put a link to that video so you can hear some of their stories. It was quite fascinating to me as a history buff to see a photo of all of them together along with many of the other prominent men from the early days of Athens history in the same photograph. Among the other many artifacts that you you're going to see in this museum are antique stoves, a display on the history of the railroad that once ran through Athens, artifacts from the Stryker Corporation. Homer Stryker was originally from Athens, Michigan. And if you're in the Portage area, you're probably well familiar with the Stryker Corporation headquarters over there. And he had his beginnings here in Athens, Michigan. There's also some history of the Native American heritage from the Potawatomi tribe, which is not very far outside of the village of Athens today. And there were many artifacts facts from the Native Americans. Axes, arrowheads, early photographs, baskets, and so much more. They also had a very interesting display on the maple syrup harvesting and the maple syrup manufacturing that is done in Athens annually. And it's sort of a tradition in the community where everybody takes part. In one of the back rooms, there is a wall with a photograph from floor to ceiling that depicts an old photo of the Athens meat market, which this building used to be way back in the day. In this photo of the front of the building, you can see a line of deer hanging up with hunters standing by posing for this photograph. And it's just a very fascinating photo when you really study it closely. Just from the people in the background to the men standing in the photo, the young boy that's standing there, and even the two dogs seem to be paying attention to the photographer. These are hunters and of course you look at those deer, those deer were in very good shape good sized ones um, and the, there's a little boy over here in the corner he probably maybe got to go hunting mm -hmm. the gentleman behind and I I know he he's somebody that I can't remember his name they're all somebody anyway you know this is tells you you can like I said you can look and see where things were and this where it says Athens meat market mm -hmm. um, as Deb said those from the corner to here all the way. But if one thing here, and I don't know who owned it, this right here where it says millinery, mm -hmm. there were women weren't allowed, you know, to do a lot of things. But millinery shops, we had at one time four different millinery shops. Wow. But I don't know who this was, but I'm going to. Throughout the whole museum, there are many photographs from the past. 
and the docents at this museum are more than happy to help share information with you about some of the history in each of the photos. There's a great section on the old opera house that I found most fascinating that once existed in the upstairs portion of a building right across the street from the museum. There's some displays of military history. There were some displays of some of the families from Athens that have been long supporters and successful people within the community. The Pontoni family, for example, has some amazing artifacts in one of the exhibits. There's also quite an impressive display of the Athens sports team's history and some of their trophies. The 1933 football championship trophy is on display in this cabinet, among many other trophies that Athens history is so proud of. There is a very impressive sheet music display, but just walking around the museum, so many items will catch your attention. From the displays of period clothing to the various artifacts for cooking or just everyday use that were so common back in the day that were such an integral part of the lives of the people that lived before the turn of the century. An impressive addition that they have just outside of the museum is a courtyard space that serves sort of as a garden area and private little alcove that has a restored fountain in the courtyard area. This fountain once stood in the downtown area of Athens and was removed and stored in an old barn and the museum managed to locate it and have it restored and put it on display here in this little courtyard area. Also very impressive is the mural that is on on the wall that depicts a lot of the early history of Athens from an artist's rendering of what the town once looked like, including horses and hitching posts. And don't overlook the many pavers that you're standing upon that reflect the outpouring of love and support from the community that made the renovations of this museum possible. There are many donor names on the paving stones and they're all very artistically done. Also in the courtyard stands an old light that once was in the downtown village of Athens way back in the day. And of course, what makes museums very special are the people that care for them and work at preserving their history. This old building has a safe in it, which serves as their archives. And I was given a little bit of a demonstration of some of the information that is found within some of the carefully curated books that they have put together, chronicling different time periods of the village's history. First class was in 1890, wow. and talk about little tiny pieces, and when I find a little tiny piece, uh -huh. I get really sad. But I didn't know that there was only one person in the first class that graduated from high school wow. until I was doing something with the newspapers, and it says the first graduate, and I got to read it, and she was the only one in the class, and I thought, wow. that's really, you know, that was pretty exciting, and then anything that we had found, and then if I found, like, the class pictures, like I was talking about mm -hmm. how excited I get if I find some, something of that sort, and this is 1891, and then there was an article, we found an article in the old newspapers about it. So, you know, we're, we're putting a little bit of info like that. And that first, this was the second class. They wrote the class history, and you can hardly read it now. Well, I don't know why, just because it's 100 plus years old. But anyway, this, this little group here that we've been working on. This is the more info about the 1903 class. And then this little book here, 1903-04, what classes they offered and what they did. Mm. You know, so sometimes we think we're so smart and then you go back and you find out what these people did mm -hmm. and were involved in. We're not so smart. Mm. So overall, a visit to the Athens Area History Museum is quite an educational experience. I recommend taking a few hours when you plan a visit so that you can absorb all the little fascinating details. And it's kind of hard to see it all in one trip, so definitely plan to come several times. It's a good place to take kids to show them a lot of artifacts and photographs and talk to them about different stories of history about the community. And I'm gonna put the link to the website of the museum in the description of this video so that you can check it out and plan your own visit. Well, that's gonna do it for today's journey through history here in Athens at the Athens Area History Museum. If you like today's video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, 
and share the video with others and definitely put it on your list to come tour this museum. And until next time, thanks for watching.